In this guide, I'm going to show you how to destroy Ming, be the number one great power well before 1500, and how to get the best possible start for the easiest world conquest. So if that sounds of interest to you, keep watching. So first things first, you're going to want to pick your rivals. Then, placate Mongolia and start improving relations with them. You're also going to want to start building a spy network against Ming. Then, build to your force limit with infantry and set up your estates. Do make sure to pick the estate privilege that gives you plus 20% to your manpower modifier, as this comes in quite handy. Then, unpause. You're going to want to move your troops to Mongolia in two stacks. When you have all of your troops in these two provinces, declare war on Ming. As you do this, you're going to want to set Mongolia to supportive, get an advisor if possible, and if you're a little less confident, hire some mercenaries. After this war, you're going to find out that money means nothing to you. You're going to need to play this smart, retreating to your own territory and picking off smaller stacks. Look at the general that is in charge of each army. If they have Zhu in their name, then make sure to prioritize attacking that army. At some point, you should trigger the Tumu Crisis. This will give you plus 20% land morale, as well as plus 25% siege ability. Ming will already have quite significant debuffs to their armies. So after this event, this war should be trivial. However, I would recommend sending 10,000 men to Beijing with another general. If you have mercs, then they should be on this stack, if you have manpower issues. The other army, with Mongolia attached, should focus on stack wiping Ming troops. This will drive up your war score quickly, as well as preventing Ming from sieging down your land, which could delay you and cost you war score. Once you've sieged down Beijing, this will trigger an event that will give you occupation over the entirety of northern China. At this point, you should have around 60% war score, so get the remaining 10% that you need by stack wiping Ming armies. Once you have around 70-75% war score, you should peace out. In this piece, you're going to want to peace out for Mongolia's cause, your own core, aligned to Beijing, and all of Ming's money. As you can see, you'll have over 2,000 ducats, so any loans you might have taken will absolutely be paid off. After the peace, you're going to want to raise your provinces. As you might be looking at this, with a view to go for a world conquest, I would advise raising every single province you get. It's an excellent way to get monarch points, as well as lowering the cost of the provinces themselves. So during this time of peace, you're going to want to be improving relations with Ashikaga, as they are the most likely to join a coalition. They do improve relations with other states as well. From here, you're going to want to stay at peace. I'm kidding. What you're going to want to be doing is declaring war on Korchin, as Ming, being their overlord, will help them. This means that you can immediately rush their capital, siege them down, as well as one or two other forts, and piece them out for another 2,000 ducats. You can also just white piece them, though I prefer to get up to 4,000 ducats and buy down my inflation, which is important because you'll have around 20% at this point. From Korchin, you're going to want to take Mongolia's cause back, as well as any other land you feel comfortable taking. Then, attack Karadel. Again, Ming will likely come in, which is ideal, as you can rush them once more, just taking their capital this time and white piecing them to reset their truce timer. Then, full annex Karadel and look to attack Tibet, or any other nation bordering you in the meantime, provided your manpower is okay. Again, hiring mercenaries is absolutely a good idea, as you have literally all the wealth in China twice over. As soon as the truce with Ming is up, you're going to want to declare on them. If you haven't already, set Mongolia to siege and simply win this war as it should be a breeze. My advice would be to have one stack sieging and the other stack roaming around for any rogue Ming stacks that could cause you any issue with regards to sieging down your land. They should have quite low mandate at this point, so you should have no issues beating them whatsoever. From here, you can do one of two things. I personally would take as much land in the east of China as possible. This puts your overextension at around 200%, but trust me when I say you can deal with this, it's just a bit of a pain. However, if you're slightly newer to the game and don't really want to do that, or aren't looking to do a world conquest, then taking around 130% is fine, because then you can raise the provinces, which will lower it to below 100% again. You're probably bored of war at this point, so I would advise settling down, and no, again, you're just going to want to attack any nation that borders you, like Haixi or Tsang, ensuring that Ming comes in. You might not even have to siege down their capital. They'll be so badly bruised and beaten up at this point that they'll just accept a white piece right off the bat usually, which again resets the truce timer. During these around five years of peace with Ming, you can try to spawn the Renaissance institution as you should be swimming in monarch points, though I would advise doing this in one of the Eastern Chinese provinces with the development edict on. For the third war against Ming, I would advise taking every province that borders them and another nation. 
as should mean collapse into smaller states. You don't want any other nation taking your rightful clay. Additionally, though it may be a crime in the eyes of most of the E4 community, I personally like to split Ming in three. Again, meaning that any Chinese states that split off will already be within my borders. So at this point, you should be the number one great power. So what should you do in the future? Well, I would advise taking humanist ideas first, just because it really does help deal with rebellions. As a horde, you're going to be dealing with a lot of rebellions throughout this playthrough. I mean, hundreds of thousands of rebels. In my World Conquest run as Oira, I had a dedicated army just for killing rebels, and I found that wasn't enough to cope with all of them. You also might want to take aristocratic ideas, as it's well-rounded with some National Unrest modifier, as well as some cavalry combat ability, which meshes nicely with horde ideas. Additionally, you probably also have the economy to support a full cavalry army at this point, and there is no reason not to. If ever you get low on funds, I recommend just taking money from Ming, although trade will be your friend. And adding any provinces to a trade company that aren't worth statifying is quite a good idea. One crucial thing is to not take the Mandate of Heaven from Ming. You're going to want to destroy the Mandate by full annexing Ming, which will allow you to form Yuan, which have just upgraded Oiret's ideas once you are an empire. So, thank you guys for watching. This is one of the easiest ways to do a world conquest in my opinion. So I do recommend you try it, even if you're a newer player. Do let me know any other nations that you're struggling with, and I'll see what I can do. Goodbye. Hello, my children. I must give you a message. Subscribe to the social streamers for eternal salvation.